All right, here we go. This video is just going to touch on a few things in regards to the War Dragon Pro, which is what you see here in front of you. I've done other videos in the past that show how to set things up for headless connections, uh, remote desktops, because uh, honestly, the box is intended to be headless and act as a sensor, uh, get information back, and uh, display that through uh, ATAC, TAC server. Now uh, there's a work in progress iOS app, hopefully in the future an Android version of the app, that will take information from the box, uh, mainly focused on drone detections, and present that to the user. There is the ability to use the uh, software-defined radio for other purposes than drone detections, just like in the previous War Dragon, uh, but that does require a little bit of work in changing the firmware or changing the mode of operation. Right now, I have the out of the box, the Ant SDR you see inside here configured to detect DJI drone ID, which in some cases is encrypted, uh, but there's still a lot that's unencrypted. For example, on this DJI Mini 2, which has uh, no remote ID, but does have drone ID. So we can detect uh, and decode that. And uh, also on the left hand side here, and sorry, I got this glove on just because this is a, a person's uh, box here and just want to keep it clean. But you have Wi-Fi remote ID detection capability on the left and Bluetooth remote ID detection, uh, detection capability on the right. And when you initially get this uh, box up and running, there's just a couple of things I want to point out. Uh, you can connect to it once this iOS app is complete. You can connect right after giving the box uh, an IP address on the network, you'll be able to use that IP address and get all the drone detections really without much uh, of any other setup. But speaking of IP address, uh, I want to point out that this Ant SDR is on a 192.168.1.10 address and connects internally to the PC's Ethernet port, which is on a 192.168.1.9. There is a USB 2 USB um, Ethernet dongle in the back that routes to the outside. So what you're going to end up running into is an issue if you put it on a network that is also giving 192.168.1. something. So without a little more configuration there, you're going to run into an issue. So keep that in mind right off the bat. Uh, I, I would recommend not doing it uh, on a network that's got 192.168.1. something. Do something. To get around that in this case i do have a home network that is on 192.168.1. something it is going into this little gl init router here at which point i have a 192.168.10. Uh, ip address coming out into the war dragon um, that was just for some testing purposes earlier you can also of course set up the hotspot and run a uh, self-contained network on the war dragon and connect that way um, just keep that in mind. So if you want to see what I've got going on here as far as uh, seeing drone information locally on the box, I was asked if I could do that and uh, combine it with ADSB. So I chose to pursue some work being done for TAR 1090 that allows uh, drone information to be displayed in TAR 1090. And if you want to get that up and running, either uh, you can do command line and be familiar with starting up uh, Docker, or in this case here, if I change into my user source flight view, and this does require um, a desktop connection if you want to use this GUI, but once you set it up once, uh, you don't really need to um, do it again. So I'm using sudo here and I'm starting this GUI. <clears throat> I'll point out also, which I plan to dig more into in the second part of this video, uh, the fact that we can run the AirSpy with the War Dragon Pro. You could plug it in externally and start up this service here and have a Docker running that is fully dedicated to detect ADSB with the AirSpy. Uh, for this video, though, I'm just going to start up TAR 1090. What you'd want to do, though, is change this is just a made up latin long here you want to change a latin long for your location where the box is going to be set your time zone up and you're going to start that that's going to start up a docker 
you could close this out and that docker will be forever running unless you manually stop it or open this GUI again and stop it. And so if we pull open a page, I'll pull up a, a private page here and I'll go to a local, local host 8078. You'll see that TAR 1090 is now running and the modifications that I've made, if I hit F12 and I kind of see what's going on here, you're going to see that not only is TAR 1090 looking for the aircraft uh, JSON, it's also looking for a DJI drone JSON and a drone uh, dot JSON. So if you want to see drone information out of the box with the uh, War Dragon, which I address in the getting started, uh, getting started uh, note on the desktop, you'd want to start and then it, well, you'd want to uh, enable I'm just going to start it for this, but uh, there's a DJI ZMQ to TAR 1090 service. And what this is doing, this is grabbing information from the Ant SDR as far as its uh, drone detections, DJI drone detection. So if you start this and enable it, that will always be running by default uh, when you boot up. This is really only needed if you want to get the information into TAR 1090 for a completely local setup of drone detections, uh, even ADSB. The other thing you'd want to do too, so that you could get the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth type uh, detections into TAR 1090. For now, you would open up the ZMQ to TAR 1090 service. That's going to create the JSONs that are needed. You'll see it no longer complains. And so once, uh, I'll show you an example here. Those JSONs are being created in the run re-ADSB. This would help if I did run. So we have the DJI drone and the drone JSON. So just to give you an example here, of how fast this detection can occur for the DJI. If I turn this DJI on, this is all pre-configured. So you can't use the Ant SDR for a normal uh, SDR++, GQRX, uh, GNU radio by default, unless you, again, change uh, the firmware or change the, the mode. There's a, a switch on the Ant SDR that you can flip and run from the internal flash which would run like a Pluto SDR, or you can reload the SD card that's in here with UHD firmware or any other firmware. But um, I'll give it a few seconds here. And so there we go. We have a uh, detection on the DJI Mini 2 in whatever that was, a few seconds or so. Uh, once it gets a GPS lock and gets a Latin long, that information will then come up you can already see where it's got the DJI Mini 2 and if I zoom out it's probably got it over here because uh, it doesn't have a GPS location yet but once that got a GPS location that would be uh, where you expect to see it along with the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi type remote ID drone detections and then if you were running the AirSpy you would have uh, aircraft on here as well so that's just a way to do it um, all contained here furthermore you could even have it offline uh, there's a open street map offline so you wouldn't have to have any internet access in order to see uh, basic information with the war dragon alone where all the drone detections are okay that's enough for now that should get you up and running look at the other videos as far as uh, if you want to run a hotspot on the war dragon and uh, rust uh, rust desk and connect to it uh, headless in order to see this same desktop, you've, you can install OpenSSH server to get into it remotely. And the uh, second part of this video, we'll come back and we'll take a look at running the iPad with the app that it will allow you to connect really right out of the box without uh, any more configuration and get drone detections on there. And then I'll probably touch again on how to run the Dragon Sync application, which can run on this box, create 
cursory on target messages in order to send off the box to uh, ATAC, uh, TAC server. Uh, so, so you could have several of these boxes positioned around and get all that information back to one location without ever having to uh, be up on the box itself. So, all right, thanks for uh, hanging in there. Just want to get this out here for those that uh, will be getting this War Dragon Pro here soon. Thank you.